Welcome back, Zero K fans, to what the bronze match of. Okay, that's gonna be weird because the Vistrician was supposed to be here, as you can see. Ivory King, actually, go here for a sec. Oops. Ah. Okay, as you can see here, Ivory King and Vistrician lost. They should be against Anakin the Sponge. However, Vistrician is gone off somewhere so we're gonna have a 1v2 yeah ivory king has opted to just go on his own just you know what forget it we're just gonna play and see what happens i don't know why but i guess it's better than forfeiting lowry allowed it so and lowry is the one who's hosting this tournament so i think that's gonna be that that guess that's it. I mean that's that's fine apparently. So yeah, we're gonna be playing on Geyser Plains, which is also weird. Yeah, okay, this is I never happened before. One v two tournament, guys. Yes. So yeah, it's gonna be weird. I mean, if Ivory King pulls this off, I'm gonna be amazed, especially since he has the lowest elo of any of the players involved. But yeah, eighteen hundred compared to eighteen fifty and two thousand fifty. That's well. It'd be amazing. It'd be interesting, but I think Ivory is probably just playing for the sake of playing at this point. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see how this works. So Anakin the Sponge starting out, as well as Ivory King starting out with two commanders. So point out that Ivory King does have two commanders. He does have two facts to plop. It's not a complete wash. I mean, he has some chance. It's just that still, that's a lot of micromanagement burden for a single player compared to having a split between two players, which Anakin the Sponge do. Shield and Cloaky, by the way. Cloaky for the Sponge and Shield for Anakid. Anakid not actually building anything at the moment. But he can if he wants to. And Ivory King has Spiders. He is not plopping yet with the second commander. He's not going for two factories right now. He is instead going for more of an economy focus. Why he's going for Spiders early on, though, is beyond me. I'm not sure if he has something up his sleeve, has something planned, but I think that the Spiders here... Are really about he's already handicapped by the fact that he is one player with two comms compared to two players. Going for spiders on top of that, I mean, maybe he's just trying to go for gold. Like, if he can win in the absolute most handicapped position he possibly could have, then that would be the best win ever. And yeah, it would actually be the best win ever. So, I mean, it'd be awesome if he managed to pull that off. We'll see if he does, but I don't know. I'd be thoroughly amazed if he did. I mean, morphing both commanders. I'm not sure what he has. Oh, both commanders are actually the same commander. So we'll see what he has once they're actually completed morphing. However, Ivory King does not have any metal or energy in reserve at the moment. Focusing a lot of it into building more units and getting a gunship plan. Okay, spiders and gunships. Still very confusing on a map like this, which is basically a vehicle and shield bot map. Cloakies work as well, but vehicles and shields are pretty much the way to go. And Ivory King just pushing. He's going for battle comm. Like, twin battle comm. Pushing in here. What does he have? I don't need to do that. I need to do this. He has a flamethrower and a blade of armor plates on both of them, naturally, since they're the same comm. My goodness, this is going to be insane. So, two flamethrowers coming in with venoms to hold things in place. Ivory King is just going for it with a brawler coming in to support in the back. I am so glad I live to see this, because this is going to be just amazingly unconventional. Okay, I'm probably overexcited. This is probably... We'll see how this goes, but yes... You never see this, ever. This is something that I've... Three Venoms and two Flamethrower comms versus two players. Going for Thug, Rogue, Rocco, uh, Rocco, sorry, and Glaive. It's... This is... This is just weird. I'm a little surprised that Ivory King is not continuing to morph these commanders as he's attacking with them. They're still level one. And they're coming under quite a lot of fire, too. The Brawler, probably that's why. The Brawler is not complete construction yet. The Brawler is still going. So once that's done, I imagine Ivory King might morph his commanders again. But still, that's a lot of damage. And the Flamethrower... Flamethrowers don't go through... Sh well, I don't think they go through shields. I'm pretty sure that was eliminated. But yeah, one of the commanders is going to go down. But it's going to go down, taking out these thugs in the process. Or no, it's actually close to the thugs that blocks their fire. Okay, now it's gone down. One of the thugs goes down with it. And another Venom trying to help out. This Brawler needs to move in. Ivory King needs to move this in. This is what I mean by the micromanagement burden. He is focused entirely on this position. He is focused entirely on this battle here. He is not at all focused on what's going on elsewhere. And he has lost a commander. Almost lost a second. 
trying to do what he can with this Venom, but really, it's just all in attack. That Brawler, if it came in sooner, might have helped. And the second commander goes down. So Ivory King has lost his commander. And I think that's going to be game one, but we'll see. He's moving with the Brawler. It might actually pull it off. However, that being said, Anarchy has expanded very heavily to the south. And the Sponge has expanded very heavily to the north. And this is going to be my micromanagement burden. Because there's a lot that needs to be done. Rod can't e-cell for Anarchid, by the way. Not that it matters in Sponge, just pure e-cell. But yeah, Anarchid is basically... Oh, Anarchid is actually digging his commander into a hole to try to avoid getting killed by the Brawler. At the same time, Anarchid and the Sponge's forces are bearing down onto Ivory King as he has a crab... As he has a Hermit, sorry, not a crab. Not that big for it. Just a Hermit. Getting some Blast Wings as well, just try to deal with this army. Possibly deal with the calm as well, but the thing is, enough production has been in place for the Sponge and Anarchid that Jethro's are easily able to come up, and Brawlers cannot kill them in time to be effective. And that Brawler's basically going to go down. That There's not much that can be done for that. The Felon also going to finish it off if the Jethro's don't. And here comes that Felon to kill it. There it goes, that Brawler is down. Yeah, Ivory King throws in the towel. Not surprising. Still, that was pretty amazing. That was pretty awesome just seeing... Two battle commanders bearing down like that. It was a valiant charge. I will grant him that. That was a valiant charge. It's not going down silently into the night. I can tell you that much. So, we'll have game two for you shortly, since apparently that is going to be... Once again... Another 1v2 from the looks of it. So, anyway, stay tuned for that. Be at the very least entertaining if it isn't balanced. Welcome back, Zerke fans, to game two of the semi or the bronze match of the two day or the one day two v two Zerke tournament. Ivory King versus Anarchid and the Sponge. Since Ivory King is partner of Astrium, ended up ended up having to leave. Although, well, actually, Ikens is trying to get in, but Ikens is trying to get into sub. But right now, it's Ivory King versus Anakin and the Sponge. Ivory King lost the last game, but I think we're going to restart this to get Icons in in order to actually have a proper sub. Because right now, Ivory King really doesn't have a chance. I mean, that was kind of amusing last game, marching in with two battle comms, but I think... I think that Ivory King is going to go for it. Go for a 1v2. He's not going to... Well, okay, we'll see. It's still being decided, but... Either Ivory King's going to be on his own or he's going to have Icons as a sub. But it looks like... Nope! Ivory King has decided he's going to go for 1v2. So we are back to 1v2 and Ivory King. Southeast corner of the map with a pair of strike commanders. What a terrible name. A pair of strike commanders hasn't been morphed yet. One of them being morphed immediately. Not yet plopping. While the Sponge and Anarchy going for air and light vehicles. The Sponge, not surprising. I mean, Anarchid always goes for air. The Sponge going for Light Vehicles is not surprising at all. Light Vehicles for Ivory King, not for one of his factories, not for the other factory. Early Lotus, early Metal Extractor. He does have a couple Commanders. And bear in mind, Commanders do have internal income. They each generate a certain amount of cash. I think Strike Comps of 3.2. 3.2 each, though. This first one has Ride Cannon and E-Cell. The second one has not morphed yet. So 3.2 for Metal and Energy for one of them, and 3.2 and 9.2 Metal and Energy for the other. Ivory King does definitely have a bit of an economic... Well, not boost so much, but he does have a fairly even economy thanks to the two comms. Still, it's the fact that he has to control all that compared to two players controlling their stuff individually. That's the hard part. Now, Ivory King, on the other hand... Okay, getting shield bots and light vehicles. So it's a little bit more reasonable this time than spiders and gunships and going in for a big rush. I mean, he might have been just trying to cheese them out and try to win. Just get game one and maybe... Maybe, just maybe, he'd have a chance later on. But the thing is, is that Anakin and the Sponge have shown that they are very good on large maps. And the thing is, the only weakness that this map had for Anakin and the Sponge was bombers. And Ivory's not going for bombers. He's going for dominatrices, and he's going for vandals. So he's definitely ready to deal with air, and he's also, I guess, just going to be really annoying. Because dominatrices are probably the most annoying unit in the entire game. Because they take over your units, and they make it that much harder for the player to die. Because they're kind of difficult to just kill in one go. It's... 
it's going to be tricky. I can say that much. It's going to be really annoying for the Sponge and Anarchid to deal with those. He's probably going to mass Dominatrices, honestly. Possibly Dommy Slasher. That's pretty common, but usually you build Slasher first when you do that. That's not what's happening. Ivory King does have a dart in the back also as well for defense, but, well, I guess not really defense. I guess just double check that nothing's going to come back here. There's nothing back here to raid, but I think it was just there because of another dart came back here from the sponge. Now, Anarchid's starting to get up his bombers. He's he's getting both the Shadows and Phoenixes. Avengers coming around the side to see what's going on, and the Vandals will be able to start fighting them and actually deal with them pretty effectively despite the burst of speed there. And Vandals do have a massive range, so that helps. Ivory King, one of his commanders is more. Both of his commanders are, in fact, more. Riot Cannon on each of them, Esau on each of them. Rather unconventional. I mean, Strike Commander is unconventional, as is going for Riot Cannon rather than Beam Laser or Light Particle Beam, or nothing at all. But frankly, in this game, in this matchup, I'm not surprised he's doing unconventional stuff, because maybe it'll just work, because it won't be expected. We'll see how that pans out, though. I mean, last game, it didn't. This game it might, though. Ivory King's actually doing a pretty good job building up an economy, getting himself set up. He is getting raided pretty heavily, though. And he's not raiding himself. He is focusing on getting the Dominatrix he's going. And that Dominatrix is... actually doing okay, being built up. I don't think that's the only one. I believe there are others. Yeah, there are two. The other one is moving out forward to the front lines. Try to take what it can, while bandits as well help out. Trying to take some air units. Actually, that might, that might just work. No! One of the commanders goes down! And one of the Scorchers does now belong to... Well, briefly belongs to Ivory King, but... Dominatrix was destroyed in the process. And I think Ivory King's going to throw in the towel. I don't think he has any hope at this point. He might still push forward. He might actually try to raid the bandits. But judging by his chat comments, I think he's probably... Thinking that it's hopeless. I mean, it's definitely tough. I can tell, say that much. It's, not going to be easy at this point. I think that Ivory King... Well, he's going to go for some raids. He's going to see what he can do with his bandits raiding. But even then, it's going to be tough. He's losing quite a lot of bandits just while he's attacking. A dart as well helping out to raid. Just trying to slow down the economy production. Getting some dominations here as well, but... Now switching to levelers. But this is still kind of odd. Admittedly, he has the shield bots for the lighter forces for filling in the gaps and for raiding. And here, that's what this Phoenix is for. Admittedly, it's not for burning your own units, but thankfully, it apparently doesn't actually care after it's been blocked down like that. I, I, think, I don't think Phoenix fire burns the same way that Pyro or Kodachi fire does. I don't think it burns continuously over time. I think it's just sort of the remnants of the initial attack. Anyway, the sponge is coming into the west side of the map. It is a bunch of Scorches coming in. That's going to be a fairly powerful attack, as well as... A couple of, well, a couple of shadows are trying to scout around. Not quite coming in yet. Still, it doesn't really matter. The Scorchers are doing, actually doing a really good job getting rid of the bandits. The bandits doing what they can to try to avoid that, but it's not enough. And the rogues cannot hit them from that range. Can I hit the Scorchers? Phoenix, not sure what it was trying to attack there. I think it might have been trying to hit this here and missed. Which is rather unfortunate for the Phoenix, but so it happens, I suppose. Anyway, it looks like... Geothermal plant in the northeast side of the map for the sponge. Well, that's going to easily be a problem for Ivory King. He only has, he has nothing to really deal with. He can't easily go to it and destroy it. And it's not like it's in an open... I mean, none of the power plants, none of the geo spots in this map are that close to metal extractors, so it's a bit hard to actually set up without having the energy pylons to set up anything, any overdrive from them. As well, it's also hard to, make, to kill them and make that be a big deal. Looks like Ivory King actually doing a pretty decent job getting rid of some of the harassment forces from the sponge, but not able to capture them with the dominatrix. So those dominatrices were a total waste. Switching over to scorchers instead. And the commander about to die to fire from the looks of it. It's just, there we go. Burns to death afterwards. After the napalm bomber has long since gone. That's got to be painful. Couldn't really do much about that. It is burned to death. Dominatrix trying to do what he can, getting a Scorcher, but not for long. Fairly able to get any attacks off with it, and I think that Ivory King has pretty much lost all hope. Yes, he has. That is GG. That is game. That's not really a surprise, but that's how it goes. Because, well, Ivory King was playing one on two. I'm glad he at least went for something. I mean, it wasn't like 
he just said, oh, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to forfeit. At least we got something. It wasn't the biggest thing in the world, but it was something. Oops. So, Ivory King, valiant effort to you. Anakin and the Sponge get third place. And now it's Saab and Yorga versus Banana I and Banana King. Or Banana King Charlie. Actually, I think Banana might be their clan name. Come to think of it. Yeah, okay, I'll just call him I and King Charlie. Though I quite got used to calling Banana I just Banana. Honestly, is it just me, or does the name Banana I sound like some sort of... Something that involves banana romance. I don't know. It's like some sort of manga genre that involves bananas falling in love with each other in some sort of forbidden love situation. I don't know. It's like... I don't even want to think about that, honestly. So, I... Going on to the finals after that, we shall have a short break. And in the finals, which will be best of five. So, stay tuned for that. Bananas in pajamas for adults. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 